Hello, hello everybody, welcome me, hello, hello. Uh, there are two people here uh, on the screen today, um, we're gonna introduce ourselves in a second, um, in the meantime, how are you doing? Uh, we see a wild axolotl in the chat, hello, hello, thank you for the heart, welcome in Zane for the first time, welcome, welcome, and uh, uh, yes let us know uh, what languages you're studying if you're studying any um, and in general uh, if you want to share anything this is the moment <laughs> why not <laughs> do it yes you want as well hello thank you for coming over always a uh, beautiful person here uh, my fellow <laughs> Italian <laughs> <laughs> uh, ciao come stai and also uh, hello uh, Yes, I remember you tell you told me how to read your name last time. A to A to T time, I think. Please let me know if I if I made a mistake again. But welcome, welcome again, and I'm glad that you're happy uh, to be here to listen to this talk, um, which is gonna be a conversation. So, if you came here. Yeah. 
to just lay back and lurk and listen to this in the background that's fine but um, feel free to comment and uh, give your insights throughout the entire thing that's why we're doing this live and we don't record it is to have everybody's uh, you know everybody's effort and then uh, you know participation coming in and create a conversation together so thank you very much for being here Maku-chan made it hello welcome <laughs> yes hello so sam hey apple hello andrea polon is uh, my uh, real life friend from my hometown <laughs> thank you for being Yay. here <laughs> hello Oh, yes. Support. Yes, right. Um, he also plays bass uh, in my in my band, so <laughs> we're oh, very close. Nice. Yeah, we've played together in like three or four bands uh, that got dis- dismantled, and then <laughs> this last one yeah. is the one remaining. But yeah, no, we we go. Our friendship goes back a lot, <laughs> so I'm glad to see you. Yes. So who are we? Uh, let's start from uh, the person on uh, the left of the screen. Also, I just noticed you have a Jamaican flag. Nice, I'm sorry. Oh. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Do you have Jamaican origins that I don't know about? Because <laughs> that's no. Uh, no okay. <laughs> Here is uh, the U.S. flag. Not unless my family has forgotten to tell me so. Right. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's okay. Well, so my name is Bronte also known as the polyglot fox um i'm a language coach i i mean we're here so we all love learning languages that's that's why we're nerding out right now <laughs> um what else can i say i also love video games yes me too <laughs> hello gamer <laughs> uh, hell yeah if you love video games spam um this emote in the chat the heart one because it's very cute yes <laughs> Hello, oh my god, we oh, have Ray. Ray in the chat. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yes, Ray has just moved back to uh, the States at the moment and then soon Jamaica. So um, they've been very busy with many things. So today, Ray's in the chat. Yes. <laughs> what happened? So happy about that. Oh my god, Stream Elements just deleted the Axel's message because it was spam, I guess. Uh, Alright, we will fix oh that. No. Sorry, Axel. <laughs> I mean, no, Axel, how dare you spam? <laughs> it's fine. Um, hello, Macha Miruku san. Macha Miruku is my Japanese friend. Welcome in. Yokoso. Hajimetu de sho. Macha san. Ah, bikurista. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Bront, tell, let's pretend we don't know who you are. Tell us maybe what kind of things you do, compared, like for language, what languages you study, maybe. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So, List is currently nine, but I have been um, peer pressured in the best way more and more to start new ones immediately rather than a little bit later, which was my original plan. Um, so, current List in various levels of fluency spanish french japanese korean mandarin chinese russian american sign language black american sign language tutnese um and then the ones that i'm planning to start shortly like pretty soon are italian and german italian because i feel like everyone in the group over in the discord is like learning italian now and i feel yes. left out yes get an italian in <laughs> everybody (laughs) let's learn this Uh, you actually you know uh, it's one of the most learned or spoken languages in the world um because of immigration i guess so it's the fourth um most uh studied and learned language in the world it's pretty crazy so yeah so it's gonna happen (laughs) jump on the italian train (laughs) yep because i know i'm gonna have people to practice with i think yeah 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 yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Uh, especially in the accountability meetings. Oh, look at this translation. We have, uh, if you didn't know, we have some accountability meetings um, where we meet every week with our fellow polyglot besties um, to um, just catch up and see how we're doing. 
and um, it's very nice to have yeah. kind of a regular meet up and uh, also being forced to like having something to say I don't know at least for me it feels like I, I feel more um, pressure in a good way to do things yeah <laughs> you know and also being inspired by everybody else's journey of course everybody at different levels different amounts of free time to be able to study um, but at the same time very inspiring so if you're interested <laughs> we have um, the polyglot besties club is um, is here let me just read you the I can't vouch it's been I so hard. I agree with. Yay! <laughs> That's been me for the past couple days. It's like, how how do I words? How how does how how work? <laughs> how do I words? You heard this first sentence. <laughs> yes. Um, also, let's see if uh, stream elements works because uh, if I do exclamation mark Discord, will the Discord come up? Yes. Oh, yes technology <laughs> let's go <laughs> it's glorious yes so join us on our discord um of course we have a a part of the discord for the polyglot besties but we have an entire space that is super free with all the language channels and uh sharing channels like we have everything set up like it's a town so it's called gladi global town we have the share house we have the language it's class adorable. the library yes i love it so much we're gonna make at one point a map of the of this uh, gladi global town it's gonna be amazing yeah Ooh, all right exciting so um <laughs> thank you thank you for being here everybody also bronte you keep gliding over the fact that you're actually a language coach so <laughs> i know you don't like oh, yeah, bragging like... <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. yeah i should just take some time to talk <laughs> okay. come on what do um, you do <laughs> so yeah so i help people learn multiple languages i have stumbled into um supporting specifically like the introvert language learners the neurodivergent language learners the learners who are like i mostly just want to read and write like those are the people that i tend to attract most but um really doesn't matter what language i just help people feel more confident in learning languages and um see more progress over time because i think one of the struggles that we face as language learners is like after the excitement after the initial motivation where we're like yeah we're learning yeah i can see the progress then the reality hits and we're like oh i have to keep going <laughs> how yep. does one keep going how do i do this you know and i know from my own school experiences like i wasn't taught how to learn and many of us aren't taught how to learn we're just taught the information and when we're learning multiple languages you really have to understand how to learn and also how you learn because you have to be in control of like you're, you're basically building a curriculum for yourself like who am i going to am i gonna have a, a tutor am i gonna go in a class am i gonna use a textbook am i just gonna you know use you know podcasts whatever how are you how am i gonna use all these things to help me learn like it's a process and also what worked for you now doesn't work for you later because we change as people and so i just help people with all those details because it's a lot it can it could feel like a lot but mm. once you have a system once you have like a um structure to what works for you it's fine it's perfect and yeah it works and very smoothly. uh actually in, um, in october uh bronte uh had um it was an experience it wasn't a language challenge it was a <laughs> language experience of uh, five yeah. days <laughs> and yeah. Bronte did a wonderful job of explaining a lot of techniques um, that um, that we can use to also discover a little bit what we have to work on and honestly I felt so inspired even if I have been in the language learning area of through like being a student and also a teacher for uh more than 10 years now i feel like i learned so much so um yeah definitely check Bronte out do you want to see do you want to see uh 
the technology here. Look at this exclamation mark Bronte. Oh yes. Come on, yes. Hey, look at this. Yes. <laughs> Definitely check uh, Bronte out. Um, because uh, it's amazing and also um, make sure that you're on discord with your notifications on because we have these beautiful experiences that we propose to you from time to time you don't spam that much to be honest <laughs> so uh, definitely check them out all right anyways um, I don't think I, I introduced myself as well but I am Anna um, it's your turn yes yeah, my turn I'm not a language coach but I'm a language teacher at the moment um, and I am also a university student uh, I'm attending Kafoska uh, University of Venice and I'm studying a master's degree in languages and I don't know how to just civilization maybe as it's not the right word languages and cultures of asia and uh mediterranean africa anna who i don't know who is this person <laughs> i don't know her <laughs> such a good teacher ah uh, so you make me blush anyways um I uh, am one of the original ma uh, founders of Glad Global when it was still called Live Love Lang. Very cute. If you go back in our videos, yep. we say, Welcome to Live Love Lang, the channel where we teach you how to learn multiple languages and how to go abroad. It's been a long time I didn't say that. <laughs> but um, The nostalgia in that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I also, um, so recently we don't have many YouTube videos, but I know that Ray is cooking. I know that Ray has so many videos that they want to publish. So stay tuned and drop a follow. Just saying. Oh, <laughs> like, yes, yes, let's go. Um, today, by the way, since, uh, no, sorry, I didn't say my languages. So I speak four languages fluently. Venetian, Italian, English, and Japanese, and um, I double here and there in Korean and Mandarin, Chinese. Um, I'm also very interested in Cantonese, but I don't have the time, <laughs> so <laughs> that's staying there. Um, at the moment, I'm also trying to learn Norwegian because I love the culture and I would love to live there in the future. Wow! Um, I am definitely not like a language hoarder more like a language ultra focused person so <laughs> whenever i study one language it's like that language <laughs> until i become like a super high level so uh, it's also nice to see like different <laughs> different ways that we approach uh to language study um since we both me and bronte we um we studied different uh, multiple languages um, today we wanted to talk about interesting keywords to keep in mind, maybe uh, to to change maybe your perspective uh, when you're learning, when you're planning your learning. We're gonna talk about goals today a little bit as well. Um, but uh, first of all, I want to ask the chat: Do you guys know what laddering means? And this My is now, uh, yes, it's uh, Bronte's favorite. Bronte, you will take over this, by the way, because I think you, you know, you know this, um, you know this topic. But yes, let's make a little uh, statistic in the chat. Do you guys know what laddering in language learning means? Uh, if you don't, it's fine. <laughs> I also didn't know <laughs> since uh, like uh, some time ago, so no worries. Axel, not really. That's perfectly fine. Um, and I think it's great to, um, you know, it's great to to be to <laughs> to be able to also share some knowledge. I always feel like as a teacher, I feel like some students of mine don't even know like what the skills like listening reading speaking yeah. and, you know that they don't know what the skills are and that or they have they never heard about you know theory of learning languages or anything so it's so it's so special to be able to <laughs> to give these tools to people to understand themselves better as well yes sam has done it oh my goodness okay uh since no worries i feel like uh some people might be shy I feel like we could start explaining. Bronte, what is laddering? Please. Yes. Okay. So laddering 
my favorite strategy um, is essentially using one non-native language to help you learn another. So if you have ever used your non-native language to help you in any way, whether it was like looking up a, de a definition, um, you know, writing notes in a non-native language for another language you're learning, uh, listening to a podcast that doesn't use your non-native language, anything that is considered laddering. Um, I have a like more uh, strategic or structured way of doing it, but um, it's just any time that you're doing, you're using resources or using languages that are not your native one, that's it. So the way that I have it, um, I have what I call two ladders because there's like the um, European language ladder and then there's the Asian language ladder just because it made sense for me in my brain. But they all start with English because that's my native language and that's where I started with learning languages. Um, and so I use my English to help me with my Spanish and to help me with my Japanese. And then this is where it gets a little crazy <laughs> because I have uh, quite a few. So I use Spanish to help me with French. I use French to help me with Russian. So what that essentially means is like when I'm looking up French things or um, like I'm reading a book, for example, in French, if there's a word in the book that I don't know, I look it up in Spanish. I do not look it up in English. And I read the definition in Spanish and English never becomes a part of that process. With Russian, which is like one of my baby languages, I'm using French to learn it. So any words that I'm learning in a Russian, the definitions are in French, the explanations are in French. Like there's a website that I have, um, I don't remember the name of it, but entirely written in French, but it's teaching me Russian. If there's something in French, so in the explanations in French that I don't get, then I look it up in Spanish. If I still don't understand, then I end up in English anyway. Um, so long story short, it's really just, one of the reasons why I like this is because it helps me to take my native language out of the equation. It helps me to um, maintain some of the languages that I've learned without having to like find a new time or like a lot of times we feel like we don't have enough time <laughs> to maintain. And so this is one of the ways where it's like, oh, I'm already going to be studying. Let me just change the language. No. Yep. No, no, Make that's really great. Sense. I love that you, uh, I love that passage that is like, not only I'm using, I'm, that is like the way that I'm maintaining the language. It's, it's just, yeah, when you have so many <laughs> as well, it's just, it, you need to, opti uh, in Italian we say optimize time. Is that how it's? Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. Making sure that you're using the time for multiple things, maybe at the same time without, you know, being too yeah. stressed. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah. It's very efficient. <laughs> that's what I mean. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I rather than that. trying to say, okay, I have to add in another hour mm. of like reading to maintain this skill. It's like, oh, when I'm studying the language I already plan to study, yeah. let's see how many different ways I can add in some of the other languages that I'm a little bit more confident in. That's so interesting. So you mentioned, uh, especially searching on the dictionary, let's say in different languages. Mm -hmm. So instead of using English, Russian dictionaries, you use uh, Spanish or French Russian dictionaries. So mm -hmm. it's more, that's, that's very interesting. I want to know, is there anybody else in the chat that does this to research words in yes. other dictionaries? Feel free to share. Um, and Joanna, my friend said, that's why I want to do the French and Spanish Duolingo courses from English once I finish them from Italian and final step just among them. Does that help? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a very long journey there that you're starting. But um, yeah, I hope, I hope, uh, I mean, if you feel that's the right thing for you, that's perfect please go on <laughs> and i love uh, so yes my friend joanna is italian so uh doing from english like a, a duolingo course from english is already studying two languages at once isn't it <laughs> it's already lottery mm -hmm. um ray says definitely taking out english um is this netherland or is a non a non-native non yeah. language mm -hmm. i think it's so good because uh, English to non-native language is so good because also you end up translating less in your head. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Sam says, Absolutely. 
Oh, sorry. I think you got a little bit. Are you still with us, Bronte? No, wow. Bronte? Yeah? Yeah, I noticed. Oh, here yeah. we go. Can I, you hear me? I can hear you. Yes, your face is frozen, but I can hear you now. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, you're moving uh, one frame per 10 seconds, more or less. <laughs> okay, we're gonna figure out tech issues on my info. <laughs> no worries, it's a little better now. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness. Okay. Yes. Um, some say something interesting. I would definitely ladder more, but there aren't many resources I've been able to find in my language pairs. I'll keep digging though. That is a very good point. <laughs> That's a good point because uh it's mm -hmm. true that a lot of um a lot of textbooks or like resources in general are from english to another language or you know made for people who know english um yeah i feel like that's probably a common issue isn't it taking yeah. out you and i think because um, it's, it's you go, oh, you go, you cool. go. Um, this is definitely something that has come up in some of my like coaching conversations because languages like uh, Swedish and Finnish, Welsh, like it's hard to find a website that's written in Welsh to teach you, let's oh. say like Japanese, for example. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that's when it becomes you're almost creating your own resources mm. because you're writing your notes down in that language. Mm. Um, so if like you're using Welsh to learn Japanese, you might be using an English to Japanese or native language to Japanese resource, but your notes that you're taking down are in Welsh. And, you know, it's still pushing you to use that language as much as possible. So it's not just about the resources you find, but it's also just about what you do. Um, and the note taking is, is one of the big ones. Oh, because yeah. then when you look back at your notes, then they're <laughs> all in that, you know, laddered language yeah that's also a good point right um i love that to be honest um i'm on the so for me english is not a native language and i have to say um when i use dictionaries i always use english to target language dictionaries because italian to me as my native language is confusing because i never studied it as an adult mm. so um I feel like I have English more, um, you know, contained or like uh, under control. <laughs> My native language is kind of whew, everywhere. <laughs> I can do anything, but I don't have that, that structure that I have with English and my other languages. So uh, it's just easy for me to find dictionaries that have English to target language. And also it gives me that structure. So I literally never used Italian dictionaries. <laughs> because it's more confusing even for Japanese um, even if uh, it doesn't really that make that much sense because it's probably uh, it doesn't matter right English and Japanese are so different anyways but it, it mm -hmm. is uh, it helps uh, and that's so I have a question for yeah, you tell me <laughs> mm -hmm. so when you are trying to like explain something in Japanese and you don't know the word English is what comes up first. Do you also know the like Italian word or does it take you a while to get it? Um, I feel like my Japanese is good enough for me to not like having a direct trans translation for every word at the moment. So I just like, yeah. it's a Japanese word and then the impression of it kind of. Um, I have studied translation of Japanese in Italian. So in that case, probably... Oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's true when I search for vocabulary on my dictionary, I search for the English word. But overall, I feel like um, it's, it's not like I don't feel limited in my ability to, you know, translate or, yeah. or having languages. come. I feel like my Italian, English and Japanese are uh, not all at the same level, but very high level. So I don't um, get confused anymore, like use one language more the than the other one i feel okay maybe. but that's be maybe because of high level right now in the beginning Pro strats sure. <laughs> and in the beginning for sure i was using italian more i guess um and then i just started to ladder with english and it got easier probably that's an interesting point of view though um do you get i know for myself yeah yeah 
It's like, like for example, if we're sticking with Japanese, if I'm speaking Japanese and there's a word that I don't know, well, I originally I just try to like explain it in Japanese、mm-hmm. to go around it, but my brain I think first thinks of Korean, honestly, because it's usually very similar. But then, if I don't know, then my brain just goes to to English. That's interesting. This is um, this kind of borders out into the um the interlanguaging thing I I wanted to speak about. But I have the、yes. same when I try to speak French, Japanese comes out sometimes. <laughs> It's very funny because French is ninety percent similar to Italian, my na- native language. Still. Japanese comes out when I don't know a word. It's so weird. <laughs> okay.、Mm-hmm. Um, For me, it used、yeah. to be Spanish and Japanese. So when I would try to speak Japanese, Spanish would come out,、<laughs> so、and、funny. I would even conjugate Japanese words in Spanish all the time. Like,、mm. no connection at all, but somehow it happens. I feel like it's like the level of how much you know a language, and it just shifts to the next one that you know or something. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Does it happen to you? Let us know in the chat. <laughs> Um, let's see.、Um, let's see. Let's see.、Um, I got it, Ray. Sorry. Yeah, taking out your native language from the situation. I get it. Get it.、Um, we want to make an app for viewing resources and logging your progress one day. Yes, this is a big project. Spoilers alert! But if you're here, you deserve to know. <laughs> Spoilers alert! We're working on、uh, something huge. Yeah. Uh, starting 2024, it's gonna be amazing, and I don't know how much I can say now, so I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna shut up for a second. <laughs> But、uh, we will、uh, the news will come、uh, to your、uh, inboxes. You will know.、Um, let's see. Yona, I actually spent my first four years of life in Bulgaria and then some summers, but never really studied Bulgarian grammar. I also want to get an English Bulgarian textbook in the future. Ah, I love it. Yes.、Ah. Wait, so would you say that you can speak a little bit of Bulgarian right now, or did you? I I know that like people who、uh, learned languages only when they were children and that they didn't use it that much. They tend to forget a lot. Um, but then, remember if you keep if you start studying again. So I'm very curious、mm-hmm. about it.、Um, yes,、uh, Makchan says I look for definitions in English. If I am not sure, I ask ChatGPT to explain to me like I am a high schooler in simpler words. <laughs> yes, explain to me like I'm five. ChatGPT, <laughs> what what does that? That's、this? a good strategy, yeah, honestly. I love that. honestly. Maku is like the AI、uh, tester because he tests his AI all the time for these kind of things. I love it.、Um, I'm very scared of AI. I don't know about you, bro. <laughs> for for learning things, I don't know if I would trust AI. Like, I know maybe it's a good tool, but personally, I feel like that distrust would make me check everything all the time. Anyways, <laughs> you know. I trust because I'm. I'm just. I think in my mind, I'm like, you're gonna take care of me, Ayat. <laughs> I am a good person. Yes, you're gonna treat me right. <laughs> yes. Right. You're gonna make sure these translations are great, right? You're not gonna make me sound silly. <laughs> when I try to use this. Oh my goodness, that's cute. Yeah. I love the trust. <laughs> And then Ray is saying,、um, "I had to study English grammar、mm-hmm. to get better other languages." Same. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you have to at one point.、Uh, you need to create a structure. If you're a teacher,、um, I am a teacher of Italian. I still feel like I cannot grasp some structures. Like it's such a complicated thing. I don't. I am like I did it for other languages. How is it possible I cannot grasp it that easy with my own language? Right. It takes time.、Mm-hmm. It's、uh, yeah. yeah, and there's still some things in English where if someone asks me what does a word mean, I it takes me a very long time to explain because I don't actually know the definition of these words.、Mm. But I'm like, well, it's kind of like, well, you use it in this situation sometimes, but also, <laughs> right? Because that's how you 
learn it like for you it's just like somebody said it in this time and so i guess that's how you use it right and yeah and that's like ideally that's how um we should learn words right based on uh situations and like but the problem is uh, when you grow up using a language it you have so much time to learn about all the situations you can use one word etc and when you're studying a language you kind of condensating everything into a few years mm-hmm. um and you need to kind of artificially create uh knowledge about these situations so <laughs> that's like the difference right mm. yeah yes let's go on reading these comments i love the comments keep it coming guys um let's see let's see yes uh Maku says when i can't explain something in polish i switch to english my co-workers are so confused sometimes but i struggle with polish <laughs> too much internet i guess uh, same <laughs> same yeah. sometimes i forget italian you know like yo <laughs> reset that's why it's <laughs> great when we have our polyglot friends who understand the other language oh like, okay, yeah i need to switch actually let me let me introduce here we're gonna keep reading comments but um i'm sure some people might understand what interlanguage means maybe because of the root of the words interlanguage um uh i was talking with my professor of linguistics and uh, sociology and um he doesn't like to use the the term interlanguage because it feels like it's a static thing but he instead like to say interlanguaging like it's a movement something that is happening um do you guys in the chat have heard this term of this term like do you have any idea what it would mean in the meantime we're going to keep reading so feel free to type let's see uh, do you want to read the Bronte what Ray wrote next? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go on. Yes. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm always trying to speak uh, Korean Japanese at the same time as me trying to speak Chinese. Yeah. Yep. And those three, that combination of those three is wild. <laughs> it is. I'm sure. Because they're similar enough that you might be understood by people, but also <laughs> different enough that you'll confuse everyone. Yeah, we were talking with Ray that we use. Um, so. Ray, every time uh, Ray sees uh, characters, the first reading that comes in mind is the uh, Chinese or Mandarin one. And for me, instead, it's the Japanese one. <laughs> so whenever I'm reading like Chinese, I go and my, my, my Japanese mind is like uh, reading the characters with Japanese reading. And Ray is doing the contrary of me. So we always joke about how we're broken like that. <laughs> We, we, we at didn't. least you guys have one cho- like <laughs> one option that your brain chooses mine just gets confused because it doesn't know where to start yeah. I just sit there and I'm like is it? because that's how I feel with Spanish and French sometimes if I see something written and my brain is like do I pronounce it with the Spanish pronunciation with the <laughs> that's French funny. pronunciation that's and funny. then I'm like yeah, so when in it's doubt, a struggle all across. When in doubt, use the Italian pronunciation. That's my goal. <laughs> That's how we do it, the things. Oh <laughs> uh, yes. Mm. Hell yeah. Listen. It's Swedish. Yeah. All right. No, no. Let's go on. No, go for no, it. No, no. <laughs> I thought it was. I was just going. On. No worries. <laughs> it's Swedish. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Swedish when you try to speak Spanish. Uh, that sounds. I guess I've never really listened to Swedish before because it's not one of my languages. But now I'm like, what does a, a Swedish Spanish mix up sound like? I guess I guess the pronunciation might be similar um, because it, I mean the vowels are a little different. But I do feel like Scandinavian languages are pronounced um, kind of like Italian and Spanish, more or less reading what is written. So mm-hmm. that could be a similarity as well. <laughs> Ray, you need to learn. You need to learn Spanish a little better. You're going there soon to leave, so. <laughs> yes. A to T time says that happens to me all the time with French and Japanese uh, word collabs. Wait. Uh, word collabs, <laughs> when there's like French and Japanese all together, uh, it's the, the same time, the same thing that happens to me. I because that's I get it. French and Japanese, the 
confusion happens. All right. And the other thing that happens is, like, when you're switching languages, so, like, you've been speaking in one and then you go to another, sometimes I bring the accent with me oh. for a little bit. And I have to, like, remember how to not... So, like, if I'm speaking in French and then I switch to Korean, I have to remember to not speak my Korean mm. with a French accent. Mm. <laughs> yep. Um, Ray gets accents so fast as well. Um, I remember whenever we, whenever Ray is in Jamaica, super Jamaican uh, accent. Whenever Ray is, you know, somewhere else, it it changes so much. And I feel like recently it's been very much of a, a Swedish accent there, eh, Ray. To <laughs> say, so I'm very excited. I I get it, and uh, I think this has to do with um, listening and you know mimicking what you hear as well and yeah. um confusion over <laughs> what you're doing at the moment <laughs> in that moment oh, yeah <laughs> yeah but that's so uh, that's uh, that's yeah hell yeah absolutely <laughs> all right uh let's go on you can read bronte your reading okay. skills are required <laughs> um Axolotl, I randomly get words in Spanish sometimes. Oh, yeah. Yep. During Italian lessons. That is. (laughs) (laughs) That happens to me uh, so much, by the way. So many Italian students. Oh, no, sorry. Students of Italian language that uh, confuse Italian with Spanish. Uh, Which is fine. I still understand. (laughs) It's always, like, interesting to um, kind of. Because, of course, uh, we're going to talk about this now. If you know the interlanguaging um, process, uh, we're going to talk in a second about it. Um, we ultimately, the goal is to communicate, isn't it? <laughs> so whatever if you say, if you're speaking in Italian and you use a, a Spanish word, I still probably understand what you mean. Um, still... I am a polyglot. Maybe another person won't understand. Um, so when students come to my lessons speaking Spanish here and there, I kind of tend to correct them because um, y- you never know like who are you gonna speak with in the, in your life or like yeah. for what kind of things. Uh, maybe for official things or maybe not. Maybe you would just speak with friends, uh, you, you know. Um, but at the same time. Uh, it's good to have a uh, knowledge or like a, um, what do you say like a, um, being aware of where one language ends and where the other start <laughs> uh, which I think is like uh, a skill to keep up as well while we're using all these techniques isn't it with like laddering interlanguaging yeah. um, which um we can talk about it for a second now so you can also reflect on it <laughs> if you want um interlanguages mean means uh, interlanguaging means to um, use multiple languages to express yourself uh, in my uh, in my interpretation of the term because there's so many things um, you could even merge two languages and use only one. Um, if you have an experience of talking with somebody that speaks two languages that you also know, you will probably have done this. Talking with them and inserting words here and there, changing language in the middle of a sentence, or like uh, creating new words uh, with the grammar of one language, <laughs> but the vocabulary of the other, you know. So um, it's a to me, it's a communicating technique that, that you can use um, for um, also experiment with the with the yeah. with the languages that you're learning, right? Um, another example could be maybe, for example, uh, when I write my diary, I always mix languages. So, depending on how I'm feeling, I will write in one language or the other, or add like some some words here and there exclamations in another language or something and um it's a cool thing only polyglots or people who's who knows two or more languages can do <laughs> and i feel like I, um, um even if we need to keep this you know uh, awareness of uh one language is 
one language, right? So when we're talking with the police, maybe we need to make sure that we can speak <laughs> yeah. in one language only. Um, it's such a cool thing to be able to mix and, you mm. know, also um, teach other people about things uh, using other languages. I cannot tell you how many times I had to explain what otsuku- otsukare means in Japanese mm. because there is no yeah. other expression in any other language but I want to say it to people so every time I'm like okay I'm gonna ma- I'm gonna give you a Japanese lesson a second because I want to say this word to you <laughs> you know and um, it's so enriching to share this knowledge maybe for words in other languages that um, don't have a translation right so now that I'm speaking my TED talk uh, about interlanguage uh, interlanguaging is finished um, I want to uh, ask also Bronte what she thinks but feel free to keep uh, the comments in the chat going do you use this interlanguaging techniques anyways for studying or for communicating with your friends is it the first time you hear about it and you were like you thought it was wrong that you couldn't do it at all let us know in the chat we want to know <laughs> yes absolutely mm-hmm. and i as you were talking well i had a lot of thoughts that were popping up just like ooh ah but one of the things that came up for me um was that i realized why i mixed up japanese and spanish <laughs> earlier on because as you're talking about using languages um or like talking with people and mixing them up i was like oh back in college my friend also studied spanish and we absolutely did speak in spanish and japanese to each other oh i love so that's that's why Mm -hmm. um but yeah i definitely surrounded myself with um other polyglots just it just naturally happened and so a lot of our conversations did become meshed. There were some people where I did speak a mixture of Japanese and Korean with. Um, and like you said, when you're writing like in your diary, I also, my notes are just a mixture yeah. um, of languages. I love that. Because if I don't know how to say it in one language, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to write it in the oh, other. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, yeah. Writing like dates, etc. for me in Japanese is like the fastest, more clear way. Um, yes. So I, I always write all the dates in, in Japanese and also the days of the week. It's just such a condensed way. <laughs> it's so nice. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I do that. Yeah. And um, in general, I have beef with um, uh, writing recognition recognition softwares, you know, like uh, mm-hmm. Good Notes has recently had an update for like writing recognition. And so whenever you write it translates what you're writing into um, typing, oh, right? Yeah. But it only works for one language at a time. So sometimes I write in English, Italian, and Japanese all together, and I have beef with the recognition. It's not thing. made for us polyglots. <laughs> right? It doesn't support interlanguaging. So yeah. Yeah. I have beef. And um, <laughs> the other thought I had um because you were bringing up words that don't translate and i know like in the discord in the pug up besties we were starting a list of some words and there was another word that i realized i was using recently that's like in japanese um and i was just like you know like you're literally it's like your mouth is sad or like lonely (laughs) (laughs) you know and it's just like it's the act of eating not because you're hungry, but just because you want food. <laughs> <laughs> you want that to taste. Like, yeah, it's like that's valid. Sometimes you're like, oh, someone baked cookies. I'm not hungry, but I would really like some. <laughs> oh yeah, I get it. You have pizza. <laughs> not hungry, but I would love some. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yes, the cravings. Also, yeah. Uh, speaking of like Japanese words uh, used like that, my partner doesn't speak a word of Japanese or he speaks one word of Japanese that is gambate. <laughs> so every time I have something coming up right now, like uh, he says gambate with this beautiful accent and I feel determined after <laughs> I receive this, kind of <laughs> this encouragement. It's so nice. It's so nice if you have a friend and like you have this like it's almost a secret language, you know, because you could also assume different meanings than the standard meaning of of the language. You can be 
something that you create for that relationship in particular and yeah that's so cool all right we need to Absolutely. read the, the chat a little bit we're a little behind <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, where, where are, are we? we yeah ray um, says be on your toes people yeah up up developing in progress just saying no <laughs> Okay, you can and, uh, Ray uses bar chat GPT to re explain things and bullet points every day. I need you know, I'm gonna write that down. Like, <laughs> I need to I need to do that. Honestly, I will do it at one point. I'm just I'm still a little bit scared of AI. <laughs> oh my. And then Maku, um, when it gives me sus answers, I tell it to give me exact sus. <laughs> I like answers. that I like one. To get proof. Yeah. Where so did you don't hear trust this? the answers? <laughs> yep. Shajibti, what the heck? This information. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yes. Not right. And then Joanna, um, I use it every day. Um, speaking slash listening with my family. I can also read and write, but more slowly. I mean, I feel more confident with English, but grew up with Bulgarian, Italian, bilingual. Mm, I see. I see, see. Yeah, yeah. I was asking, right, um, if uh, she remembered Bulgarian or not. Yeah. So, um, that's. <laughs> I love that. Oh yes. When you grow grow up with more than one language in your family, I feel like you're a superhuman, because it's <laughs> right. It's like so cool. Yeah. Um. Uh, you you have these different perspectives, uh, um, that are so enriching as well. Yes. Absolutely. Oh. Ray says I like Google's Bard more than ChatGPT. All right, I'll check Bard out. Maybe I like the name. Okay. As a D and D fan, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> yes, serenade me, Bard. <laughs> yep. You know it's instantly amazing. Yeah. <laughs> mhm. Mm let's see. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry, Ray. Regarding to Bard, I just paste something from a good site I trust and ask it as to make it simpler or ask it to say it in five different ways. Hell yeah. Ooh, I love yeah. that. It reminds me of those videos on YouTube where they're explaining something and they're like, explain it to a college student, to someone oh. in high school, to like a young child and then like kindergarten. And, you know, they're explaining like, uh, I don't know, like weathering or something, mm. you know, some chemical reaction, but they're explaining it. Yeah, so yeah. ChatGPT or Bard is going to explain it to me. Like I, love I love that. I love that. There is like a subreddit called uh, Explain to Me Like I'm Five, where uh, it's not it's not an AI, but you can type there and be like, ask any question, <laughs> and people will explain it in the simplest way ever. So. <laughs> Um, that's a good principle. I like that. I'm gonna ask AI to to simplify things for me, maybe. That's interesting. I love that. Agree. Mm. Do you want to read and next one? Zane. Yes. Yeah. And then Zane saying, that's how I feel for Spanish. Because sometimes it can say a word, but it means a bunch of different things. Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> so sometimes it's hard to put the right words together. It's, a Spangli it's like Spanglish for me. Spanglish. Especially because all of the different dialects in Spanish... It's, e it's like even when you have a meaning in your mind, someone else's Spanish is going to tell them it means something different. Mm -hmm. There's also so many different kinds of Spanish, right? Yeah, yeah. Right now I, I live with... My friend is from Guatemala, so um, my housemate uh, was talking to me about how, me how much... It's, it's European Spanish is so different from her own Spanish and like Latin American Spanish so um, there's also like those things where the same word means completely a, a completely mm -hmm. different thing <laughs> in different yep. Spanishes and uh, yeah it's it's complicated but that's because we're human we're not machines that make things simple right <laughs> we make yeah. things complicated <laughs> but that's the beauty of it too yes see uh ray said for swedish um things i think it's your Europe, the european vibe of speaking that screws with me <laughs> so spanish print next we're gonna do spanish print <laughs> let's okay go. <laughs> let's go spanish print 
I also sorry my uh, my housemate yeah from Guatemala watches the uh, TV series so I learned recently that olvidar means to forget so I'm learning Spanish too. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Nice. I love it. Yes. <laughs> and then interlanguaging is Ray's Spanish. favorite polygot privilege. Pro- oh. Polygot privilege. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's a tea time. Uh, says I feel that after every group project or group study session, I want to say it's got it at the end. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, think no, Japanese has is, a lot of. It's kind of the best word ever. You cannot tell me. It means so many things. Um, <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of words like that in Japanese that just are so fitting. It's like. The feeling you want to get across to someone that we don't have in many other languages, but is perfect. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's like acknowledging that you're tired and also appreciating your effort and also, you know, we're on it together. Like all these things, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so nice. I love it. Yeah, that's why I think I also prefer like gambate over like. I guess an English equivalent would do be your good best. luck, but it's it's not enough. Yeah, it's yeah. Do your do best, your it's best like, but still, it's like when what you is? say that, the feeling is missing. It's missing. Yeah, it's not enough. You should say so many things, right, to reach that same. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Absolutely. Yes, Ray says I need to make a page on my website for words I wish everybody knew. Yes. Yes. Ooh. And everybody, somebody's like, I don't know this word. You can be like, you read the website. <laughs> also, yes, go to the page. Yeah. It's there. It is there. All the explanation. That's a very good blog post, though. Words. Words I wish everybody knew. Everybody in the world knew. You know? As well. Mm-hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was I saying, combate. <laughs> what happened here? Oh, I'm sorry, Zayn. Uh, for some reason, uh, it might be. Sorry, Zayn. I see that your messages were deleted. We still have to figure out auto mod. So I'm gonna read your message anyway. So no worries. Um, you're not timed out or anything. I think there's something with the auto mod going on. I will check it out. Sorry about this. Um, so sometimes I mean something, but the other people look at me weird because that word means something else to them. <laughs> yeah, I think it's good to um, it's good to like approach a situation with curiosity. You know, um, of course, maybe you studied, and uh, but we are complicated creatures, aren't we? So maybe maybe it's very personal as well. Maybe some people prefer one f- word instead of another for any hidden meaning in their personal life so it's very good to stay curious and ask for why you know <laughs> maybe it's like sorry did i say something wrong and ask for an explanation and get enriched by that right yes <laughs> and also just use the excuse hey i'm a language learner yes i'm sorry <laughs> hey, I, I'm a I, yeah i'm still learning <laughs> uh, can you explain you know mm-hmm. yeah. yes absolutely because I love, uh, I love that Axel was ready with the gambate earlier when I was talking about it. <laughs> yes. So, yes. So. Oh, and one other thing I was thinking mm-hmm. of, because um, you brought up like almost like a secret language using um, interlanguaging, mm-hmm. and so with my mom, I taught her a few Korean phrases mm-hmm. that I like. I test her on. So mm-hmm. since I was young, probably in middle school, so like twelve ish. I started calling my mom Oma instead of mom in public because my my reasoning was like, hey mom, there's gonna be a lot of kids out in public calling for their moms. I wanna make sure that you know it's me. Ah, <laughs> so that's that so if I am lost in a supermarket, you're gonna hear Oma <laughs> You're gonna say, Yeah, that's my child. <laughs> that's so cute. So, Oh yeah, and now God. it's habit. So I call her Oma, and there are three questions that I ask her regularly. I say, Pegopa, are you hungry? Pigune, are you tired? Gentana, are you okay? And she generally understands all three. Sometimes she struggles with like Gentana, yeah. but I I go through them one at a time, and I'm like, you now know Korean. Yes. You can brag about it. 
<laughs> I love that. I love that you were like, there are so many children with their moms. I'm gonna call you in Korean. My sister with the same problem. She just calls my mom by name, <laughs> which is less cute. <laughs> it's so funny. Okay. Yeah, no, no, she does. It's so weird. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Oh, uh, hello. I want to read your name so bad. Crack me news. Okay. <laughs> I did it. Um, Interlanguage <laughs> words that everyone should use will make a great YouTube video. It will make a great anything. Instagram posts. Yes. And blog posts. And website page. And YouTube video. TikTok. Everywhere, right? Everywhere. Um, yes. The Jamaican issue is... Jamaican. Sorry. The Jamaican issue is with the word hush in Jamaica. Yeah, you told me about this before. It means, oh, never mind, it'd be okay. But in America, it means shut up. <laughs> and I've messed up many times because of it. I love that. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. I remember you said hush many times to me. And I was like, are you asking me to calm down? <laughs> I didn't know that either, so now I'm like, okay, and now I'm thinking back to all the times my, like, Caribbean <laughs> friends or, like, elders have said hush to me, and I'm like, oh, oh, I completely misunderstood. Yeah, right. That's so funny. <laughs> hush. You know? You say it, like, to be honest, you say it such an, in a calming manner, it calms people down probably, right? Because you're like hush, yeah. but it uh, it does feel like it's the same thing for like the word quiet in American English and British English means different things. Did you know Bronte? No. Uh, it's quite beautiful. In in American English, it's like it's kind of beautiful, right? But in British English, it means it's very beautiful. It's quite beautiful. Oh, like very very yeah. Misunderstood that as well. Yes. Apparently. <laughs> Right? Kyber, can you... Kyber, hello, by the way. Kyber is from uh, from uh, England. Can you confirm? Is it correct? I love learning random things at random times, like out of nowhere. Yes. Like today. I feel like we learned. We learned so many things. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's so I, yeah, it is cute. I love that. <laughs> Bronte... Wait, is your name spelled with an A like that? With the two dots? My... Or name uh -huh. is spelled with a um, apostrophe between the T and the E but sometimes I have to leave it out because technology doesn't like my uh. name <laughs> it's like you can't use special characters oh, with your name that's so <laughs> annoying dude yeah yeah so no I think I, I think Ray misspelled the A Bronte because of this no, that's fine. because of the Scandinavian thing I told before I, I know Yes, you have been uh, you've been uh, influenced too much by the Swedes. <laughs> yeah, Kyber says it's correcto. So okay. yeah, quiet means very in British. But yeah, I definitely called my mom Oma yesterday, and um, we work at the same job. And I was like, I haven't seen her in two days because she generally works mornings and I work evenings. And so she was having some of my coworkers try to find me. And I heard her voice, and then, like, from, like, four or five aisles away, I was like, oh, my! Aww. And she immediately turned around. She was like, that's her. That is Bronte. <laughs> that's my baby. <laughs> yep. That's so cute. I love that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, right. Gotta make sure she knows it's me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, let's see, Ray, he catches us all the time, Lord. For Alex, it's like, baby, you want to hug them, and you say, hush, yeah, baby, never mind. <laughs> hush, sh sh shut up, baby. It's okay. <laughs> shut up. Oh, my goodness. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. That is so funny. So uh, this is just a reminder to everyone watching, to, like, when you hear words and you're confused about the definition or you immediately assume yeah. something, just ask just because ask. it might mean something different to people. Yeah, it's it's very important to keep this in mind, especially um, yeah, when you're in an inter international environment, like that means like you you have to you speaking with uh, you're speaking with so many people from many different places, even if you speak languages in common. 
you have different mm-hmm. backgrounds and it's like such yes. a big lesson to learn when you get into this kind of environments right to keep an open mind because it you there will be some things that you're like uh, about you know it's a bit um confused or like maybe offended even who knows but um mm-hmm. that's because the background the way uh, that we grew up and everything is so different and the way we use language reflects that and yeah it's important to keep an open mind yeah. yes check the intention first for sure <laughs> A hundred percent. Oh yeah, and that's also why I like uh, language learning communities because usually uh, you find so many people that are so patient, you know, so so understanding, and uh, they listen to the reasons, the intentions. They want to kind of go deeper. Um, it's nice. Yeah, absolutely. Also, is it, that a like shameless yeah. plug for Gladly Global? Oh yes. Uh, by the <laughs> way, did you know about uh, now we're active and supportive community called Gladly Global? We got um yeah we got so many things uh, going on, but let's see if I have exclamation mark socials. Ha! Look at that! Yay! Oh my God! Let's go! Technology. Um, but yeah, so um definitely check out all the socials uh our friend ray and bronte our friends sorry ray and bronte work so hard on social media and i work so hard on discord so come over yeah come over and say hi <laughs> i feel lonely sometimes everybody's a little bit shy because it's it's a little big discord but um i promise we work so hard to make sure it's a safe place for everybody so uh don't worry and like uh, feel free to use the space language learning honestly yeah go like find a find a channel that you're like interested in hopping into and just say hi put a little emoji and watch just what happens watch how like kind and amazing people are to welcome you in because i am also a lurker and sometimes i just do that and then like run away like come back. <laughs> I see what happened. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, did it. Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Also, thank you, Maku, for the ten. It's lot. I don't remember what is the the currency of Poland. I don't remember how to pronounce it. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you thank for you, the ten. Plan. Tell me, please, what is the what is the currency? Because, <laughs> but I appreciate we we appreciate it. Thank you very much, Monkey John. Also, yes, language learning improves your empathy. Confirmed. Mm-hmm. Yep. Overwhelming. Our Discord is so not overwhelming. It's not crowded at all. I am a moderator and administrator, so I know. It's not people are not like spamming or anything. If people spammed. I would be the first one to say something about <laughs> it. You know, so Absolutely. yeah, no worries at all. Um, and there's plenty of voice channels as well. And yeah, I mean, uh, feel feel do what you feel like it's safe for you. But just yeah. so you know, we work hard to make it safe. I know there are sketchy Discord servers out there, so it's lotty. Yeah, I still don't know how to pronounce it though. <laughs> so. <laughs> Slot, slot, sloty. Yeah. Well, anyways, appreciated, Marco, very much. Um. Also, guys, it's December. Um. Just uh, we're approaching the end of the live stream. So, as an ending note, I want to remind everybody. First of all, we're going. We have a goals uh, workshop that is recorded and available for you for free on our um, on our uh, polyglot shop but um, I think Ray is also planning on doing a little live workshop Ray oh yeah yeah can you take can you take a screenshot right now and tag us on social media we are ready. Take it now. We're gonna stay like this for <laughs> ten seconds. Take take the screenshot. Yes. Let's go. Ah. Did you take it yet? Uh huh. Can you tag at Glad oh, Global, at Anna Lemonti, uh, at Bronte? No, sorry, at the Polyglot Hawk. 
Fox. <laughs> I said the wrong. <laughs> I forgot the polyglot fox. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I'm really tired. Me the past two yeah. days is just words. It's not happening. I I'm surprised word. I've had sentences today. I can't word. Yes. And uh, Tagas place. It's uh, it's very nice to see um, the stories. <laughs> it's it's Zuo. Oh, that's how you say it. Zuo tea. Ah, thank you. Zwoti. Yeah, look at that interlanguage right there. Maku told me how to pronounce using Japanese katakana and English. Zwoti. Yeah. Did you see that? In the in parentheses? Yeah. In brackets? Yeah, I love that. He does that all the time for Polish for me and it's so cool. It's like a superpower, guys. Oh my goodness. Yes, I love <laughs> learning languages. Let's see. Um, do you want to read... Uh, crack me oh, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> So, Bronte's situation, so my situation, um, it reminds me of my sister, so say itadakimasu, gochiso sama when eating. Also, saw my sister write the letter J looking like the Japanese character T. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that is another thing, like, those aren't really translated. Because even when you look in, you know, the beginner textbooks, itadakimasu, gochiso sama, mm -hmm. it's like, before you eat and after you eat and that's mm. kind of what it's defined as the thing you say before you eat the mm. thing you say after you eat yeah <laughs> and yeah i went to say goji sosama so many times in my life you have no idea it's actually not funny i'm like Ugh. and you see that like, something wants to come out but i it's, it's, it's nobody's gonna understand yes you gotta whisper you just goji sosama <laughs> Yes, to myself. Also, I just realized it was crack minus, uh, not crack minutes, but I was too co polite. I thought it was German. <laughs> but that's funnier. I, I'm happy that I didn't say the, the right name first. It's funnier like this. Anyways, yeah, interesting YouTube name. Um, yes, Kyber Tagas on Instagram. What the heck? Thank you. Yes. All right. So um, we're gonna talk about goals going on uh, into January, um, but I want to actually why not? A uh, big challenge for everybody who is in the Discord server. Um, what are your goals for next year? And also, um, did they change from this year? Um, feel free to write uh, let's create a conversation in our general chat which is very very not used at the moment so no worries let's spam there um, we have general chat in our discord server let's write what are our goals for next year this is our challenge for this month join the discord yes then you get to join the conversation yes here it is and uh, we're gonna write it later, no worries. So, um, let's see. Yes, it works. Technology. All right. I feel like uh, I feel like we're both me and Brunta today. <laughs> we're very tired, so we're not gonna uh, stream for too long. So I think we can end it here for today. But um, don't worry, the goals conversation is gonna go on. We're, we're gonna talk about it again next uh, well on discord and then in the next months so um join the conversation thank you guys a uh, little reminder thank you. yes little reminder to uh to you you got this to have faith in yourselves <laughs> if we did it you can do it right mm -hmm. yep yes absolutely no, 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 Maku. Manifesting publicly is the way. You should, you should manifest, but take some time to think about what you can actually do. We're gonna talk about this, like how to choose your goals a little bit more next time, but definitely take some time not to just say, I wanna learn two languages next year, but think about exactly what you're able to uh to accomplish in one year what what would you like to be able to do uh or what would you like to do throughout the year right yeah so it's good to be very pra practical <laughs> yeah I, I like to say that it's hard to see progress if you don't know what kind of progress you expect to see. I, 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 you said this all the time, Bronte, but we're giving yeah. away all the tips. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
uh, no no there's no there's no thing as uh, like secret tips no worries but um we we will talk about this again yes we'll talk about it. yes thank you guys for being here today uh, appreciate you very much thank you for creating a conversation and for the laughs and your insights and thank you also Bronte for joining today <laughs> So I wasn't alone, because <laughs> uh, no, I, I know it. you're tired um, recently. No, but this is fun. <laughs> I think as polygons, we just love to talk about the languaging. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. I feel like, it, anyways, it's like uh, just a free conversation, so it's not too heavy. Um, yeah, <laughs> Maka, you should talk about Bruno. No, no. Yes, yes. C C C. Let's talk about Bruno. C C. All right. And after that, I think it's a time to go and get a cup of tea or something for yes. <laughs> maybe take a nap, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's my plan. And go on with our day. Thank you guys. And we'll see you next month for some goal tips. Stay tuned. Bye bye. Bye.